Coach, we're going to go right here, front row to the right in the pink jacket. I'm Ashlyn Dotson from Spectacular Magazine. So I've attended several of your post conferences, and you mentioned the importance of just maintaining the tradition and style of UNC basketball. How have you managed to preserve that tra or tradition Sorry, while adding your own touch to the program? Well, I mean, you know, one of the things that I talk to the players all the time is, as you know, you know, the privilege of being um, a Carolina basketball player is, is you know, you got to be the best that you can be in three areas, on the court, off the court, and in the classroom. And there's no better example of that than these two individuals right here, and Armando and RJ. Um, and during my press conference, one of the things that I said three years ago was that, you know, the foundation of this place, uh, Coach Smith, Coach Guthridge, um, Coach Doherty, Coach Williams, um, those are things that not only that I have experienced, but I believe in. But it's also important to, to walk the same road and the same paths, but in my own shoes with my personality. And so um, being able to do that and feel very comfortable in that role. Coach, to your left, third row. Raise your hand, please, sir. Hubert, Thank Brendan you. Marks. Yeah, hey, Brendan. Hey. Good to see you. Uh, we joked over the summer, this is Armando's. We did? Uh, this is Armando's last year. We joked about that. Yeah, this is definitely did. his last year. <laughs> um. <laughs> you don't want to stay another year? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just wondering, since he made the decision to come back for his last year, is there anything else that you've learned about him despite having already spent as much time as you have with him? No, I, you, know, I've, you know, I've known Armando since he was 15 years old. A lot of people don't know that uh, I was uh, recruiting in, uh, right outside of Milwaukee and I was supposed to be headed to uh, New York to recruit. And the person that we were recruiting uh, ended up not playing. And so I had called Coach Williams and I said, look, it's doesn't make sense to go to go to uh, go to New York. I heard about a tournament in uh, Richmond, Virginia, and I was like, "Is there a possibility that I could just stop by there?" And Coach Williams said, "Yeah, sure." And so I I stopped back at home. Uh, I grew up right outside of Washington D.C. area, so I, I flew from Milwaukee to Washington D.C., spent the night with my dad, and then woke up really early in the morning to get to this AAU event. Got there at nine o'clock in the morning and walked into the gym, and it was. Uh, 6'10", 6'10", and 6'9", front line. I said, this is perfect. I got here for the 17 and under AAU game. And the guy told me, no, this isn't 17 and under, this is 15 and under. And it was uh, Armando, Isaiah Todd, and I was like, 15 and under? And so I've known Armando a long time. And uh, it's a blessing and an honor to think that not only have I been one of his coaches as a head coach and assistant coach, but uh, been that for five years. Uh, for somebody that is as accomplished as Armando and the character that he brings off the court, um, that is a coach's dream. And so to have him back for the fifth year is really a blessing and an honor. Coach, to your right, first row. Dan DT.com. Coach, just looking at these last two seasons as the head coach of this program, just yeah. your lessons learned up to this point, what you've seen through your eyes on the sideline. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I, you know, I talk to the guys at great length about is, you know, turning down the noise from the phone, the family, the friends, and, and the college fans. And, and that, um, that noise comes from two different directions and the, you know, the criticism direction and also the direction of praise and prosperity. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things that I always say is I'm, I'm teaching life through basketball. And I think one of the things that, the guys, especially, you know, RJ and Armando and the guys that returning have understood that, you know, the, probably the hardest noise to manage and maintain is the one from the praise and prosperity. And so, you know, coming off of a year where, you know, you're a minute and 25 seconds away from winning a national championship and being able not to lose sight of the discipline and the details that put yourself in a position just to be successful, whether it's preparation and practice and play, um, that's something that, um, that you have to hold on to. And that's the most important part. And I really believe that's one of the many lessons that a returning players like RJ and Armando have learned from last year to this year. Coach to the right side, all the way against the wall. 
Uh, Coach Hubert Davis, first of all, how you doing? Good, how uh, are you? Uh, I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, first, I want to get this out of the way. When I used to play NBA Live 95 and I grabbed the Knicks, I would immediately bench Starks and put you as my shooting guard. Well, and you I, did, I don't you know about that. Starks was pretty good. He was, <laughs> uh, he was a great teammate, and uh, he was, he was, but I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. And, no uh, problem. <laughs> and I want to talk about uh, the guy from Louisville, the Charlotte 10, Jalen, Jalen Withers, yeah. and what type of impact you expect him to have for your team this season. Yeah, you know, one of the things that um, um, Jay, I call him Jay Witt, and the reason because we have Jalen Washington and Jalen Withers, and both of them are JW, so I say Jay Wash, Jay Witt. So Jay Witt, uh, we, um, you know, he brings something to the table that we haven't had in a long time at that position, uh, size and athleticism and versatility on both ends of the floor. I personally think he can be an elite defender, you know, a guy that can guard one through five, his length, his athleticism, rebounding, running the floor. Uh, I think on the offensive end, his ability to attack the basket, just be great at cutting and slashing and using that athleticism to be able to get to the free throw line and offensive rebound is gonna be huge for us. And so um, that's an area that he's improving on every day and we need him. He's a big piece of this puzzle for, for this team this year. Coach, thank you. You can switch places with Armando. Okay, Armando great. will spend about three or four minutes with you. <clears throat> Folks, again, please identify the agency you're with. Uh, Monday, we're going to start first row to your left. Gentleman right there in the white shirt. Armando, uh, Carolina Bliss, Royal Howell. Armando, what changes have you made to your game to kind of elevate this team to the next level and, you know, get prep prepared for the next level also? Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing for me this year is just going out there and playing hard every possession. I think if I do that, we'll be in a good position to win a lot of ball games, but also just trying to lead more and just also by leading by example too. Armando, first row to your right. Right there with Dan, I'm sorry. Armando, you jokingly said that this is the last year. So as you reflect on the memories up to this point at North Carolina, what have been some of your favorite moments as you get set to make hopefully your most favorite memory? I mean, definitely just the big wins. I mean, I think that's why everyone comes to Carolina and just being able to experience um, the great wins with the teammates and traveling to different places, those all have been great for me since I've been here. Armando, from the podium, um, seven players out, five players in from last year. You talk about people want to come. How do you create the culture? How do you maintain the culture with so many new people? Yeah, I mean, it's been refreshing and great having a bunch of new faces because we get a lot of different perspectives from them coming from different places and all of those guys are hungry, and I think that's just great, especially just how last year went, having a fresh start with a bunch of new faces. And it's been exciting and fun, and we all love each other, and those guys like to compete, so that's great. On the center aisle, third row, left. David Glenn from the David Glenn Show in the North Carolina Sports Network. Armando, nine teammates of yours from last year are no longer your teammates. I know it's early, but what have you seen in terms of the personalities around you that are different, in terms of the basketball skills around you that are different, uh, as you think of this new season? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing this year, we just got a lot of guys that like to compete. And I mean, I think that's half of the battle right there, just having people that want to go out there and fight because it really boosts up the level of everybody. I mean, I think adding Harrison and Cormac has just been huge for the team's morale because they bring it every day. And we in practice talking junk and just competing and just bringing that attitude into practice. All it does is just elevates us and hopefully, and it will carry over into games too. Armando, your last question from the podium. Uh, do you feel like the old man? Yeah, no, I do. Um, this is my third time doing this. That has to be somewhat of a record, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad to be able to just still. Well, yeah, I'm not even the oldest player on the team, so. Yeah, I'm not that old, <laughs> I guess. But I mean, it's great just being able to still be able to play at this university and take advantage of everything that this school has done for me because I've gotten so much out of being a University of North Carolina athlete, so I'm just glad to get one more year and I'm going to make this year my best. Thank you, Armando. You can switch places with RJ, and RJ, you can finish us out. Folks, if you've already asked a question still, please identify yourselves to Not our student-athlete. <laughs> question for RJ. We'll go front row to our left. And RJ, if you want to pull those mics down a little bit, you yeah, can do that. Yeah, I'm going to say it's too high You're for good. me. You're good. RJ, Carolina Blitz, Royal Howe. Um, RJ, last year, Coach Huber mentioned that 
he had you all write on a sheet of paper your goals for the season and wanted you to live up to expectations. What are those goals going into this season ahead? I mean, I think the first one is always to win a national championship. But in terms of like goals as a team, it's just to hold each other accountable. I think that's the main thing. We got a you know group of guys. It's a new group. Um, so obviously, building that chemistry uh, was a needed piece throughout this off season and preseason. But just to kind of go into each game with that mentality of like you know we're gonna give every team their best shot. So you know, holding each other accountable, doing the little things. Um, I think that's what would make the. Uh, our goals um, become uh, being able to accomplish all of them. RJ, to your right, first row. Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. Looking at the fact that this roster has changed so much with you and Armando coming back, what can you say about your leadership style as well as if it's a good thing mm -hmm. to see that this team has so much newness going off of last season's adversity? I mean, it's great. I mean, just for me and Mondo to be the veterans of this group um, and kind of for me, just you know, I've always been a leader by example, but kind of stepping out of my comfort zone by leading by more vocally, uh, stepping into that leadership role of, you know, just knowing the ins and outs and not being here for four years, going to my senior year. Or so um, just kind of like leading the guys and, you know, trying to show them the way how North Carolina run, how run things and what's the standard for us. And I think, you know, just for me, just to experience the good and the bad. Uh, with a lot of the experience, you know, I think I could lead this group as long as the Mondo. Um, but I think what's also uh, makes us such a dynamic team is we also have Cormac, who's been in school um, for quite a while, Harrison Ingram. So everyone has their own uh, leadership standpoint. And that's, I think that's what makes us you know, such a good team so far. RJ, we're going to go back to the first row to your left. Uh, Royal Howe, Carolina Blitz. Um, RJ, can you just – in your own words, what do you think the identity of this UNC basketball team will be? I think our identity is going to be grit um, and playing with that competitive edge. Uh, we have a lot of guys that's want, that want it. They, have, they play with a chip on their shoulder. Um, and they all came to Carolina for a reason. Um, I think they're all excited to put that jersey on and run out that tunnel. Um, and for them to kind of just compete for each other and this university, I think that's what's going to be like our identity right there. RJ, from the podium, talk about identity. Last year, the team did not shoot very well from beyond the three-point line. Uh, how do you work on that? How do you create a new identity that proves that North Carolina can shoot from beyond the arc? I mean, we have a, a lot of shooters this year, uh, from myself, Cormac Ryan, uh, Paxson, uh, Harrison. So I think for us to be able to be confident and knock it down from three, it kind of takes off the pressure from Mondo from being double teamed or triple teamed each game. So um, we have a lot of versatility throughout the whole line and where guys are able to make plays, um, not for myself or Mondo, but for everyone. And we have the confidence enough to go ahead and knock it down from three. So our, uh, our first still photographer of the morning. So right here in the center. Uh, Shelby Swanson with the Daily Tar Heel. Obviously, this is your last year playing alongside Mondo. I mean, it has to be. What are the emotions with that? I mean, <laughs> It's definitely uh, sad, you know, being a model of my freshman year. Uh, but just to see how he's grown as a, you know, a player and as a person, just to, you know, not knowing much of him from my freshman year, kind of just building a connection with him. But uh, I think, you know, this is going to be our, our best year, just in terms of you know, our connection being there, um, me being a senior, him being an old head. So I just think that uh, <laughs> um, I'm super proud of him and super proud of the relationship that we built on and off the court.